Hello everyone. Let's take a look at this spring mass problem. A spring is stretched six inches by a mass that weighs eight pounds. The mass is attached to a dash pod mechanism that has a damping constant of one fourth pound times second perfect and is acted by an external force of four cosine two t pound. Determine the steady state response of this system. All right, so pretty much we're going to find the solution of this uh, differential equation that you're going to set up. And then we're going to determine which part of the solution uh, doesn't die out even as t goes to infinity, because that's what the steady state solution is. So let's go ahead and set up the differential equation. So um, I have done similar problem in another video. I'll leave the link in the description box for you to check it out. So uh, for this one, we're going to first figure out what is it that we're modeling. So we know our differential equation will be uh, m times u double prime plus gamma times u prime plus k times u is equals to some g of t. And we might have initial conditions, u, the initial position of the mass and initial velocity of the mass. So we'll have to figure this out. And for this problem, it seems like we're not given the initial conditions. You can cross these off. So let's figure out what is our uh, coefficients m, gamma, and k are. Now, gamma is the uh, damping constant, which is given to us in the problem that's right here. So that is immediate from the problem. So we know gamma is 1 fourth. No need to change the uh, units. Then we're also given that the spring is stretched six inches. So that is our uh, length it is stretched. Let's call it L, that is six inches. Let's convert that to feet. So we multiply it by one foot is 12 inch, which will give us one half of a foot. All right, so that is L, which means now we can use the equation W is equal to the spring constant K times the length it is stretched. So that means W over L is going to be the value of K. And that K, we're going to put it right here in our differential equation. So we know W is given in the problem. That's right here. This is 8 pounds. So this is W. So we will have 8 divided by uh, 1 over 2 is equal to K, which is 16. 16 is the value of K. All right. So we got K. We have gamma. Now the next thing we need to find is M. M is the mass. So we know that uh, uh, w is equal to mass times the gravitational force, the weight force. This is equal to uh, w over g is equal to m. So since the units here we're using feet, um, we're going to be using the g value to be 32 feet per second squared. So let's substitute that. So we're going to have uh, 8 divided by 32 is equal to m. And then you can simplify this. This will give you 1 over 4 is equal to m, the mass. All right, so plugging all of these into our differential equation, we're going to be modeling the following. So 1 fourth u double prime plus gamma, that's also 1 fourth u prime plus k, that's 16 u is equal to. Now g is representing an external force of this system. So it looks like the external force is given right here. That is your G of T. So I'll put that in here. So this will be four cosine of two T. No initial conditions given, which are not necessary in this problem. So we're just gonna continue. So this is the differential equation that will model this particular system. So we need to find the solution to it. So the, we know the solution U of uh, T, it's gonna be the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. So let's compute the homogeneous solution. Um, so we find the corresponding homogeneous equation. So the corresponding homogeneous equation, it's going to be setting g of t to zero. So we have one fourth u double prime plus one fourth u prime plus 16 u is equal to zero. You can multiply both sides by four to get rid of that coefficient, one fourth. So you'll have u double prime plus u prime plus 64 u is equal to zero. So then our characteristic 
polynomial is going to be r squared plus r plus 64 goes to zero. And then if you work this out using the quadratic formula, you will see that r is a complex root. This is going to give you negative one half plus or minus square root of 255 over 2i. So our roots, r1 and r2, are complex conjugate. That means our homogeneous solution, yh, is going to be c1 e to the 1 half t cosine of square root of 255 divided by 2t plus c2 e to the negative 1 half t sine of square root of 255 over 2t. So that is the homogeneous solution. Let's hold on to that. Now we're going to use the undetermined coefficient methods to figure out the particular solution. And then we know the general solution is the sum of particular and homogeneous. So let's hold on to that. So uh, now let's go back to the initial differential equation right here. This is the g of t, which means undetermined coefficient is the good method to use. So we're going to guess the form of yp or up. Uh, so up is going to be, since it is cosine, so note that g of t is 4 cosine 2t. So our guess would be some constant a cosine of 2t plus some constant b sine of 2t. So remember, if you're using undetermined coefficient, if your g of t is sine or cosine, you need both of these for your guess. Now, none of these are duplicates here, so that means we don't need to modify. We continue deriving its first and second derivative. So yp prime, that is going to be using the chain rule. This is negative 2a sine of 2t plus 2b cosine of 2t. We derive it one more time, the second derivative of that. That is going to be, again, using chain rule. That's negative 4a cosine of 2t plus, no, I think this would be minus, derivative of cosine is negative sine. This is negative 4b sine of 2t. All right, now we're going to take u sub p, u sub p prime and u sub p double prime, plug that back into the original equation that's right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, no, let me go ahead and just copy that down so I don't have to keep sliding up and down. So there you go. So this is my uh, differential equation. Let's substitute our y u sub p in there. So we'll have one fourth times u double prime. That's these guys right here. So I'm gonna save some time by just copy pasting my functions. All right, then plus one fourth u prime. Uh, that's this one right here. Put that here. And then the last term was our guess. So plus 16 times u sub p, that's this one. All right, so this goes here. And now we're gonna set this equal to uh, four cosine of 2t. All right, now let's equate coefficients. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute out my constant terms here, here as well. So I have a nicer equation to work with. I have negative um, a cosine of 2t and the negative uh, b sine of 2t and then minus one half a sine of 2t and then positive one half b cosine of 2t and then 16 a cosine of 2t plus 16 b sine of 2t. Everything goes to four cosine of 2t. And we're gonna equate coefficient. So I'm gonna collect the terms with cosine 2t and set them equal to the right-hand side. So these guys have cosine. So this is one equation we're gonna create. So we'll have um, the coefficient, all of this is equal to four. So you'll have negative a plus one half b in front of cosine 2t, and then 16a is equal to four. So I equated all the terms on the left-hand side with cosine 2t equal to the right-hand side of cosine 2t, that's four. 
And then all the terms with sine 2d, there is no sine on the right-hand side, so we're going to equal that to 0. So that's this one, this one, and this one. All right, so the next equation we'll have is negative b uh, minus 1 half a plus 16a. Oh, b, sorry, this one should be b. Uh, is equal to zero because there's no, you can think of plus zero sine 2t if you want. Okay, now let's solve this system of equation, find the values of a's and b. So the first equation uh, I can solve, I will have uh, 15a plus one half b is equal to four. You can multiply both sides by two. So you'll have 30a plus b is equal to eight which means b is equal to 8 minus 30a. All right, so that's one of my equations. And then I'm going to take this, plug it in here in place of b. So let me do that. So I will also combine these coefficients. So this equation gives me um, 15b minus 1 half a equals to 0. Now substitute the b value here. So you'll have 15 times 8 minus 30a minus 1 half a is equal to 0. We can multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So you'll have 38 minus 30a is equal to uh, a. I've also moved the a to the right-hand side. And then I guess I can continue to solve. And then if you solve it algebraically, eventually you'll see that a is going to be 240 divided by 901. All right, so that's the value of A. That's a little calculation. And then I'm gonna plug this back in here to get B. So B is gonna be eight minus 30 times 240 divided by 901, which will give you about 81 over 901. So that's the value of B. All right, so I have my particular solutions. Now I'm gonna substitute these into my what u sub p, so a is here, b is here. So let me grab this and put it on the bottom for you. So our particular solution is right here, substituting the values of a's and b's, a is 240 over 901, and b is 81 over 901. So what is our solution? Well, our solution, ut, is, it's a uh, uh, plus up. So u sub h, the homogeneous solution was these guys right here. So let me copy this down for you. And then we'll determine which one is the steady state solution. So use use of t is this. So this is u h. Uh, and then now we know u sub p is this one. That's the particular solution. So the steady state solution is eventually when t approaches zero, solution behaves more like which function? So as you can see, as t approaches infinity, as t increases, uh, these guys are eventually going to go to zero because of this term right here. That means the steady state solutions is going to be only these guys. So our, uh, uh, our solution will eventually... Uh, behave like um, you can say, oh, I guess I could write it this so way. As t goes to infinity, the steady state solution is going to be 240 over 901 cosine of 2t plus 81 over 901 sine of 2t. So as t approaches infinity, our solution will look more and more like these guys. So that's what that means. All right, uh, this is it. I hope you got the same answer as me. I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.